Thank you so much for being with us tonight. My name is Nate Mitchell, and I'm a co-director at Anasazi Foundation. Uh, it's my pleasure to describe and explain a little bit of what we're going to be doing uh, together tonight. At Anasazi, we have a long-standing tradition. At this time of year, we like to put on a great big party where we gather together all of our friends and family and alumni and supporters, and we celebrate. We celebrate our forwards walking. We celebrate all of the good work that's been able to be done uh, during the year. We also have a chance to raise some money for our scholarship fund. Sadly, we're not able to throw such a party this year, obviously. Um, so this, what you see here, is our annual scholarship gala. Thanks for tuning in to our first uh, virtual uh, scholarship gala. We have a part of our tradition of this uh, scholarship gala is that we try to bring as much of the trail into the gala as we possibly can. But we have a, a little bit different approach this year. This year, we have the opportunity to bring you along out to the trail. So we have a special program where we're gonna have a, a couple of trail walkers take an alumni mom out to the trail and we want you to come along with us thanks to the good work of our awesome video team. There is much to be learned from the world around us, far more than we normally comprehend. The ancient ones knew this well, most particularly the wise teachers among them, those who in the Navajo tongue were called Anasazi. These ancient teachers understood well that no man is as wise as Mother Earth. For man too is of the dust, and Mother Earth stands ready to nurture and heal her children. We have found that no modern prescriptions heal the human heart so fully or so well as the prescription from the ancient ones. To the hills, they would say. To which we would add, to the trees, the valleys, and the streams as well. For there is a power in nature that man has ignored and the result has been heartache and pain. Walk among the hills, the trees, valleys, and the streams, and you will find the way home. So to get things started, to get things kicked off in the right way tonight, I uh, get to introduce our MC for this evening, Mandy Gubler. Uh, she is an expert DIYer uh, who started out uh, doing her DIY adventures as a way to, to show off her abilities of, of refinishing some furniture that she found in a thrift store and it became a blog, and then it became an uh, uh, Instagram sensation. If you've ever wanted to have a best friend who's an expert DIY person, then you should probably follow her. Um, and we're very privileged to have her with us tonight. Of all of the credentials that she has, I think the most impressive credential of all is that she's an Anasazi mom. Please uh, help me in welcoming Mandy Gubler. <coughs> Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. I love Anasazi. So That's pretty much. exciting, right? Yeah, it's amazing. Anasazi has absolutely and very fundamentally changed our entire family. Um, about a year ago, my a year and a half ago, my teenage daughter was just struggling as teenagers do, and we tried so many things to figure out how we could help her and reach her and and mend the relationships that we had, and um, we just, nothing was working. And in normal world, saying that um, 
you heard a voice telling you to do something would be considered, you know, a little weird. But at Anasazi, it's like not so much. Totally normal. It's pretty normal. So I, we fit right in. But I had this really cool experience where um, I had this really distinct feeling that she needed to go to Anasazi, and I do not remember how I heard about Anasazi. Um, I racked my brain, and I, I'm sure that somewhere along the way in my life and in being involved in the addiction recovery program that my husband and I have been so heavily involved in, I'm sure that Anasazi came up, but I like, can't consciously tell you how I heard about Anasazi. Hmm. Um, and so I heard this voice that said that I needed to go to Anasazi, and I like climbed out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I sat at my computer, and I started Googling, and Anasazi was real. It was like a place that she could actually go. It was so cool. Um, and so she came. She went on the trail, and she's been off for a year. And it is um, one of the most sacred, beautiful things that I hold in my heart is our experience here. Wow. You know, the, the longer that I'm involved with this work, the more um, I'm inclined not to believe in coincidences. Right. That those, those things that uh, aren't just mere happenstance, that they're, they're pretty they real. They are so real. Yeah, it's amazing. So I'm excited to take everybody who's watching on the trail. This right. was a really cool, unique experience. I have a question for you. Yes. What, when we asked you to come and, <laughs> and be the MC for the night, did you know what you were getting into? Did you? Well, so the plan originally was for me just to come and like talk and you know do this part right. of it. And we had a phone call, and they were talking about Callie going on the trail. And they were talking about all this stuff, and I was like, well, can I go on the trail? And and everyone was like, do you want to go on the trail? Because you had already been on the trail as a, as a parent. You went right. to family camp. We went to family camp, and it was so wonderful. And so when they were talking about it, I was like, I want a deeper walking experience. And so just like put my life on hold and went out on the trail for a few days. What a gift. And what a gift for, for us to be able to bring all of our friends oh and family God. and, and yes. all of those people along with us. I know. I wish that everyone could actually be on the trail yeah. with us. Like, how amazing would that be? But I think that this was a pretty good glimpse into it. Awesome. So, guys, here's what you're going to do. You're going to grab your favorite trail snack, whether that is cold gold, which is Ivy's favorite, um, Beanie Mac, or wet dog. We know that that is a, that is a very popular food on the trail. And you're going to settle in and watch our fun trail experience. My name is Ford. Ford, so nice to meet you. Man, it's great to meet you. Hey, Mandy, I'm Callie. Hi, Callie. All right, Mandy, well, so this is the rabbit stick room, and this is where we are gonna gather all of your stuff and all the gear that you're gonna need for the trail. <laughs>
How am I gonna get up? Oh, we'll help you out. That's it. here that have reached the status of legendary. And I was lucky enough to get two legendary trail walkers. Callie Russell, who is the, I mean, I don't even know how to describe her other than I'm so obsessed with her. I want to like go live in the wilderness of Montana with her. Um, you may know Callie from the most recent season of Alone. So if you haven't seen that, you definitely want to check that out. And along with Callie, my second trail walker was Ford Erickson. And if you have been around Ford, he's like kind of indescribable. If you don't know Ford, you'll get to meet him a little bit later. Now, the trail walkers were um, massively impactful in my daughter's walking. And they still keep in contact with her. And they, um, they were able to love her so deeply that I, as a mother who I obviously couldn't be on the trail with her, I knew that she was being taken care of. I knew that she was having these beautiful, amazing experiences because she told me about them. In her letter, she talked about these individual trail walkers who had impacted her life and her walking so immensely. Um, and so I came in, you know, I'm like the most eternally optimistic human ever, hoping to have an experience like that. And that's exactly what I got. Callie and Ford made all of my trail dreams come true. So are you guys ready? We're gonna head out to the Tonto. All right, Mandy. Welcome to the trail. Ta da! That was a bumpy ride. It really was. Yeah. All right, well, let's grab our stuff. Are you ready to go on a hike? I'm, I think I'm ready. First, I think I need to find the bathroom. Oh! Yeah, there's a few options out here. <laughs> oh, it's look. I mean, the one I tied. Well, 
First time I did this, it was the exact same level of difficulty as it is today, <laughs> six years later. Do you want me to carry that? That's okay. Young walkers aren't yeah. allowed to touch the compass. Hey, watch it. <laughs> sorry, He's sorry. Trying to, trying to scheme here? Maybe. I just want pizza delivery. <laughs> well, they don't deliver out here. <laughs> we've tried. Yeah, we have. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, you won't get any pizza for seven weeks. Okay, fine. Sorry. But you're going to learn some I've more heard, meals. I've heard that there's a recipe book floating around Grove Town that has a pizza All right, Ridge. recipe in it. Yeah, you got the vehicle? Yeah. Yep. All Real right. pizza. Yep. Cool. Good to see you. I'll take care of it. All right. We'll see you later. Good luck. You we'll call you. On down there. Spot's got, it's feeling good, I think. Okay. I think this is home. This is it. Yeah. We're home. We're home. <laughs> I can't lift this arm up very hard. <laughs> Come on, bird. Come on. <laughs> significantly greater appreciation for what all of these young walkers do. I'm not going to say that it was freezing, but I will say that the first night, Callie Russell, who survived negative 40 degree temperatures in the Arctic, was cold. So there's that. Also, just everything from gathering firewood to cooking our food in our little tin cups over the fire, like it was a very real shortened but still real Anasazi experience. I even got to participate in some of the amazing ceremonies that Anasazi is so known for. Um, I got to have a blanket stepping with Callie. Now I'm familiar with blanket stepping because we did a blanket stepping at family camp, but being able to do one just for myself um, with the things that I am currently caring and struggling with and to be able to like Sh openly share those and find insight and peace and acceptance from my trail walker and to be able to channel all of that into a stone that we then threw all the way up the mountain. It was just beautiful. Um, I also was able to have a knife stepping. Now, when a young walker has a knife stepping, it's a huge sign of trust from the trail walkers because these knives, as we know, are tools that are so important for life on the trail but also there's something that can be used negatively. Um, so to be able to take this tool and to be able to, um, to see it as a representation of my words or my actions, that they can do so much good and they can create situations where I am connected and thriving and part of something bigger, or they can be used negatively to hurt people or um, negatively impact my life or the lives of others. That was a really profound experience to be able to be trusted with that knife. Um, and I was in for a treat. I didn't even know that I would have the experience of having a, um, sitting with a shadow. So Meryl came 
and we were able to really sit down and I was able to open up and process a lot of the things that I had been holding on to for the last year, um, just having this Anasazi experience with my daughter, being able to just let it all out, someone who truly understands what I was experiencing as a parent, and also the experience of being on the trail away from my family, away from my business, away from all of the crazy things that happen in our lives. It was so um, comforting and just full of peace and understanding, and I'm so, so grateful for that experience. I will say, I am the most grateful for the trail walkers that kept me alive because I didn't know how to do anything. Ford said there's a bunch of different ways. Anasaz is kind of most famous way of setting up a shelter. Is What is it called? A flying kite? No. I don't know. Flying, I like that, though. A flying, flying kite. Flying. This over a flat duffy spot is kind of crying out A-frame. It is kind of. Uh, I mean, A-frames are very trendy right now. Ooh, you design. would know. Are they? They are very in demand, so let's A-frame Well, we want to get and not just a shelter to keep you dry, right? We want a beautiful, beautiful right. vintage revival shelter. Yep. Yes. OK, so, so let's do yes. it. Let's A-frame. A-frames right. are in. OK. So you can tie right off to the grommet. But over time, for a whole walking, you know, say six, eight weeks or something out here, these will tear out and in a big storm. So it's really great to find a little stone. So let's go find, we're looking for like, kind of like a marble sized uh, stone with no sharp edges. To Got it. The tarp. We'll also need four big stones for the each four corners. You have a little stone. Oh yes, all right. Let's pick, which one? You pick which one you want to use. Um, I don't, this one? Okay, perfect. Cap. Uh-huh. Yeah. What's this for? Ah, yes. Ah, this is a good friend. This is what we affectionately call at Anasazi, the green burrito. But you unbutton it and you put your sleeping bag inside of it. Guys. Every fire is a is a, it's a huge gift, you know, and it's okay. it's just a, a kind of a magical. It's magic. It's, it's magic. seriously magic. It is. Like, this is wait. it's ancient. It's ancient sunlight trapped. Yes. In these pieces of wood, these plants harvested the sunlight mm. and are storing it. Yes. And then with the right knowledge and skill. They come to life again yeah. as sunlight yeah. is burst forth. Yeah. And your whole board bursts into flame. Chunky cool. one. Oh, that's a chunky coal. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Got a breeze right at that exact.
One of the most heart-wrenching and humbling experiences that I have had as a mother is dropping my daughter off at Anasazi. And I'm so grateful for the parent seminars that they do. While we are there in this really crazy, emotional, vulnerable state, and I don't know about you moms that are watching that also have experienced this, but I cried the entire time. It was crazy. Um, the tools that our family gained being a part of Anasazi has fundamentally changed the way that we interact with each other. And when you're in these cycles of collusion and patterns that are just not working and you just keep trying the same pattern over and over and over, you don't have the tools that you need to actually change the pattern. And that's what I got as a mother being a part of the parent seminar. It just, it gave me the tools that I needed and I could not wait to put those tools into use. Um, getting a letter from Ive, hearing about the beautiful awakenings that she was having on the trail, the things that she was learning, um, the recognition of the seeds of greatness that we all have, like that we as, you know, her parents saw, but being able to have her see those and share those awakenings with me, all of the awakenings that I was having at the same time, it just profoundly impacted our relationship. And one of the best parts about Anasazi is being able to share those awakenings with other people, whether that's on a parent phone call or being a, being a part of the parent seminar, the Young Walkers. Um, fire circles are where that magic really happens. This is the life. I agree, Ford. Yeah, this is my... This is a really nice time on the trail. One of my favorite times. Well, I can't, I don't want to pick favorites. I don't want to pick favorites, but just this time just feels so good. You know, you've had a really hard day. Everyone's hiked really hard, had ups and downs, challenges, but you finally get to a camp spot. You finally get to water, unpack. Everyone has their shelters set up. Someone busts a coal. Everyone gets firewood and you can finally just sit down and make a cup of food. And then the stars start coming out. <laughs> yeah. This, this is like, this is like, this is the same thing as, you know, people maybe work their tough eight to five job or whatever. And all things they gotta do at the end of the day, they make themselves some dinner, throw something in the microwave, and sit down and watch some TV. <laughs> this is like the equivalent. Yeah, where you finally, you can feel it, you're just like, it's like you exhale, you got the TV breath. going here, mm -hmm. and then the other show is coming on next. Yep. And it's just some good shows coming up. Well, 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 well. Welcome everyone to tonight's edition of Fire Circle. Tonight's topic, I believe, was what we settled on was uh, what is your favorite path in the seven paths, and why? What you know? What application does it have to you? Why do you feel that way? For me, it's really hard to choose a favorite path because they all have such powerful lessons that are just really crucial and helpful in one's life walking. But the one that stands out for me when I hear that question is the path of water, where they're talking about, you know, when you stick your hand into the stream and then pull your hand out, that void is filled instantly. So my favorite path, I also very much love all of them. They all have such deeply profound lessons that you just like, 
uncover layer after layer and it's just so beautiful. Um, but my favorite, gosh, see, told you. Cry your, um, path the water, right? <laughs> just let it flow. Um, my favorite path is the path of wind. And the reason that I, the reason that I love it so much is because I had a really simple um, kind of paradigm perspective shift while I was reading it. So when, when we dropped Ivy off and she went out on the trail, it was super emotional. And it just like, all of the parents who have done this understand how it rips you open to like your very most vulnerable place and so after our weekend here we were driving home and I was just a mess because I was so worried. I knew that she would be safe. I knew that she was in great hands and all of that stuff, but I was just so worried about not being able to, to talk to her or see her, or all of that stuff. And um, when we were driving home, I was reading The Seven Paths and in The Path of Wind, it talks about how wind fills every space how there is um, a mountain here and a mountain here and they seem completely separate but that they are actually connected by the wind and I remember looking up out of the windshield of the car and there was a mountain and a mountain and it was like the world kind of flipped upside down and for the first time I could see the space that the wind occupied and I could I knew that as far apart as I was from I that the wind was there and it filled the entire space between us However I was feeling that day, I would just open my heart and feel it and send it through the wind to her. And it brought me so much peace to know that we were connected and it still does. I remember when I first started at Anasazi, though my least favorite path was Path of Animals. I just didn't feel like I got a whole lot out of that section. Um, I didn't have anything against it, but it just wasn't, didn't really seem to resonate as much with me as all the other paths did. And I remember one person telling me, I think it was, I think it was Meg Evans, I think, one time told me that her favorite path was Path of Animals, at least back then. And I was like, I didn't say this out loud, but I was like, really? Huh. Hi. <laughs> you know, um, and then I can't remember when it was. Maybe even like a year later. But I feel like I had some really powerful insights that really were, were really applicable to me at the time. Um, my trail name is. Chanting Summer Waters, and I have spoken. My trail name is Juniper Bird, and I have spoken. And uh, I'm Dancing Thunder Raven, and I have spoken. So that fire circle was amazing. I know, it was so good. There was so many profound things shared. I think the fire circles might be my favorite part. Yes. Uh, being out on the trail, it, like the times that, that you experience, 
being around and passing that, that talking stick is sometimes that phenomenon that happens where you find yourself speaking things that you didn't know that you knew. Mm -hmm. And that is a sacred space. And we, we share those things that we've awakened to. And it's, it's, it's good medicine for us and good medicine for those people who uh, are hearing it. For sure. And tonight, I hope all the, all the people who are tuning in uh, and participating with us, they have this, this chance to, there's this, this feed of comments, right? That they can mm -hmm. add their own awakenings and we can have a giant fire circle with all of us, um, which is kind of a dream. It is true. a dream. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's so sure. amazing. So we have a, a little bit of an announcement to make. There's an anonymous donor uh, who is going to match all of our donations for $500 and $1,000 uh, during tonight's uh, event. Oh my so gosh. if you're able to donate, please do. Uh, it would a chance to double your donation uh, for those amounts. We're really grateful for um, people who are enthusiastic about the work that we do mm -hmm. and sharing that. A light with other people. It makes me like really emotional to just think about that because it's just, it's what it's supposed to be, right? It's like learning all of these beautiful things and having these awakenings that then impact our life to help other people. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it, it's, it's something that always happens when you feel that one of the first instincts is to share it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that makes, that lets you know that it's true light yes and, and it, that's good medicine uh, one of the features that we have in our annual gala is music we can't have a, a <laughs> yes. full gala without music so um tonight we have uh stephen nelson from the, the musical group gentry who we had at our gala last year so you yes, were there I last was year there last year and i still talk about his this performance that yeah. he did because it like Blew my mind. So Stephen Nelson is the um, kind of a musical mastermind and a genius. Uh, he's the piano player for, for Gentry. Mm -hmm. And he, what he does is he will get uh, sort of spontaneous suggestions from the audience of one pop song and one uh, movie soundtrack. And he'll do this amazing mashup with them. And as soon as we, at, in the office, the folks who work at Anastasia, as soon as we knew that that's what, who was going to be doing the gala this year. Everybody had their suggestions. Oh, so we threw them all into a bucket. Yes. And we don't know what's going to happen, but we're about to see. I cannot wait to see. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Matt with Matt and Savannah. And um, I'm excited to do this because at our concert, and I know at Gentry's concert, this is everybody's favorite, favorite moment. Um, this is Steven Nelson. And uh, if you guys have ever been to a Gentry concert or to our Matt and Savannah concert, you will know the most popular part is the movie medley game. And what that is, is we will take two songs that Stephen has not seen before this. So this is all completely new and a total surprise to Stephen. One is going to be a movie song and the other is going to be a pop song. And so he's going to pick one of each out of this bucket and then instantly mash it together into a beautiful, incredible, unforgettable, <laughs> one seamless song. And it is magical to watch. So I am so excited for you guys to see this. We're going to have Steven reach into this bucket and you have to pick one blue and you have to pick one orange. So any blue and any orange. What is that one? Moana. Moana. How far I go? Oh, well, I love that song. Savannah would be so excited. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Okay, so here we have it. We have uh, Moana, How Far I'll Go, and Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And what Steven's going to do is he's not even paying attention to me anymore because Steven goes into a whole other world as he, without ever playing it on the piano, he just plays it in his head. He's going to mash it up. And so one of the interesting things about Stephen, and I don't know how many people know this, but he's got this thing called synesthesia. And what that is, is in his brain, when he's playing music, um, 
he sees colors for um, certain notes and he like ha and notes have texture so for example if he were to play a C, he would like see green in his head and maybe it would have a sandpaper like texture. And so as he composes, it's not only um, what his ears are telling him, it's how the colors and the textures and how everything just kind of meshes together in his head. It's incredible. I don't know anybody else um, that has synesthesia. Um, but it's got to be one of the big reasons for his musical genius. And so what he's doing now, and this is amazing, he doesn't actually, he, he can't, he's not listening to it, right? He's playing it like air playing the piano as he's meshing this together. But you're going to hear this in a second, and I promise you, you're going to think that we rigged this or something. This has never been done before, and this will be the first time that any of us have ever heard this song and I promise you I'm as excited as you are to hear this. So we're gonna give Steven just maybe another, are you, how are you feeling? You're almost, okay. We're gonna give Steven a few more minutes, I mean a few more tens of seconds <laughs> to get this done. But I, he, he was telling me before um, how every time he does this, he doubts himself like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make this work. <laughs> And then you're going to see every time he does it, it is unbelievable. It is magical and you'll never forget it. So I'm excited for you guys to hear Moana, how far I'll go. Moana girl that just wants to have fun. Yes. Okay, <laughs> here we go. I'm going to turn it over to you, Stephen. amazing oh my gosh that's always my favorite i love that one that was cool <laughs> Great. thanks for the bucket ideas yeah that was awesome i'm telling you it's my favorite thing ever the mashup game i love it good job steven thank you you're welcome thank you i am so excited for you guys to meet one of my favorite trail walkers on the planet the legendary ford thunder Erickson. <laughs> oh boy. I'm surprised I found you all the way out here in the wilderness. I know. Hey Ford. Doing great. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, I love you. Got a nice so little fire much. going here. I know. It was getting cold out there in the forest, but I'm glad I found this fire. So yeah. speaking of fire, 
I didn't know how hard it was to bust. It's like, real hard. It's so hard. And I didn't do it. It's true. You were so close, though. So close, so many times. Right. But explain this. I to got. Me. I got to tell you, Mandy. Okay. I am so glad that you struggled. <laughs> really? But I, I don't want to make you feel bad. Okay, it's fine. I'm good at a lot of things. Busting me, B just isn't one of those. <laughs> well, you, you got time. It took me two years to bust a coal the first time. Okay. So okay. don't worry. You got time. I have plenty of time. Okay. So you may have not been able to quite, just quite get a coal mm -hmm. while you were out there, but you had the opportunity mm -hmm. to take a tinder bundle with a coal to put in there and get the feeling yes. of blowing it into flame. Which was so, so beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so busting is all about balance, balance, <laughs> and centeredness too. So you want your, your weight to be right over the board and you want to be like all close in and centered. You don't want to just be like, you know, trying to maneuver from way out here. You want to just get right in there. And I'm kind of at an angle here, so I have room for the bow to move. Am I going to light my pants on here? Oh, if the board bursts into flames. Put it in your sock or something. not spinning super well, mm -hmm. just barely, what? Just now. Maybe like, we'll tighten the string. Look at that. Oh my goodness. There's still like 18 coals. Part of it too, yeah. The more you can, if you can, if you feel comfortable with it, just tip it just a little bit. Okay. So when you're blowing, it's going through all the fibers like that. It's heating up. through really fast All and right. it's gonna burn my hand. Yeah, okay, let's will. go to the fire. All right. Okay, let's Wait. run. Oh my gosh. Run the fire. Well, run the fire. Move <laughs> intentionally <laughs> towards <laughs> the fire. Do I need to like, do anything? You can just set it down. Yay! Yay! Mandy, how do you feel? So happy. Like I want to cry, but I'm so happy I can't, which has never happened to me before. <laughs> <laughs> I 
What are you gonna name it? For sure, Ivy. Uh. Oh. That was so amazing. It was great. Does everybody cry when they name their first fire? It's a significant percentage. I think the studies haven't been finished <laughs> yet, but it's a high percentage of people okay, who cry I, on their first fire. I like it. <clears throat> I will say that I absolutely loved the song that Callie was singing. I don't know if mm. you guys could hear that. Maybe, since she's not here to defend herself, maybe we should volunteer her to make an Instagram video. Yep. Singing Callie, this you're song. watching. We need that song. We need the fire song, Callie. But it talks about um, this ancient sun that the, the plant captured mm. and how it's released. And it's so good. Yeah, it's really powerful. The symbolism that Callie used in that song to when people are working on busting a coal, she used it to kind of create a sense of calm, mm -hmm. a sense of peace. But the symbolism that she talks about in the song is really cool because all these trees and plants, they're all reaching up to the sun. And they're reaching up to get that energy from the sun. And so they're storing that energy. That's what they live off of. And then we, when these trees die, we pick up some of these. It's kind of hot. <laughs> it's roaring fire here. But we pick up some of these old pieces of wood, which still have that energy of the sun stored in them, and we use them to create another fire, which in a sense is a piece of that sun. Of this ancient sun. It's a really beautiful kind of cyclical thing that she it's talked about. It's so beautiful. There are so many incredible lessons with fire. Holy mackerel there are. Uh, one of my trail names is Walks with Fire. Okay, and that's beautiful. I was gifted that name because of the big struggle I had with fire making and all the awakenings I had with it. It took me, from the first time I got a bow, bow drill set until I finally got a coal, it took me about two and a half years, roughly. Um, so I know the struggle. <laughs> um, so you're fine. <laughs> um, but I got so many awakenings out of my struggle with it and I'm so glad that I struggled with it. And I could go on for a long, 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 long time talking about that. One in particular that I'll say really briefly that I learned was I worked at Anasazi for half a year and then I left for a few months and came back. And during that first year that I was at Anasazi, I got pretty comfortable with fire making. And even when I was gone, I would practice it quite a bit. Um, but then when I came back, I just thought, all right, I'm just gonna jump back in. I know how to do this. Like I've done it a million times at this point and I couldn't get it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Frustrating. I couldn't get it. <laughs> And a lot of the same insecurities that were affecting me when I first was learning fire were coming back, that were kind of haunting me in my head, saying like, oh, you're not good enough. Uh, everybody else can get it, but you can't get mm -hmm. it. Why are you so weak? All these negative voices in my head. And I was talking to one of the other trail walkers about it, and he was able to point out to me something that I had never, ever considered about myself before. And he said, it sounds kind of like you compare yourself to others a lot. And I had never considered that ever before. But that's exactly what it was. When other people would succeed making their fire, I wouldn't cheer for them. I wouldn't feel happy for them. I would immediately feel jealous. Uh -huh. And it was this negative feeling. And that doesn't mean me learning that. That was completely healed from my life and taken away. But I'm aware of it. And now, whenever I feel those same feelings creeping up, I know what it is. I know that I struggle with that. Yes. And so I can address it. And I feel like I've gotten somewhat better with it. I still get jealous from time to time. <laughs> but, you know, I'm aware of it. And I could go on for a long, long time. But that's just one, wow. one thing that I've learned from fire making. That is so amazing. That's so cool. What, what was it like for you seeing Ivy bust a coal and make a fire? Oh, my gosh. We were at family camp. And she got in. It was um, twilight. It was getting really quite dark quickly and she couldn't get it and she was trying so hard she had to carve like four new notches because she kept just burning mm. through them and she finally got it and um it as a mother to see her not give up and to just keep trying it was cold and she like had become like this wild woman and she like didn't even have a jacket on <laughs> 
She's just out there like making this fire. It was so beautiful. But I will say the moment, my, my favorite moment at family camp was reuniting with her. Mm. Um, just the anticipation of, you know, over these six weeks that she was on the trail, I had become a different person. And um, she also had become a different person. And so the anticipation of um, like joining together was so intense. And then we're standing there waiting and she comes just like tromp like tromping in with her giant pack <laughs> and her and her t-shirt and her dirty face and her shining blue eyes and glowing smile and just this inner light that had exploded while she was on the trail. Um, it is one of my most sacred memories and something that I will cherish forever. And I'm so grateful that Anasazi exists and that there is, um, that there's a way to bring that light out in people to, you know, to, to find their seeds of greatness and to really cultivate them and, and get them to grow and, and have such a profound impact on not only their life, but on the lives of everyone that they come in contact with. It's just so beautiful. Mm. So thank you for being a trail walker and for changing so many people's lives. Like, and all of you, all of you Anasazi wonderful humans, I'm as a mother who has been on the receiving end of your light and love, I am eternally grateful. Thank you for being a real Anasazi mom. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing a really personal thing about your family. Yep. Um, I have witnessed a lot of the re family reunions at family camp, and I, I'm not a parent, but I'm <laughs> right there with you. I kind of have to hide in the bushes a little bit because I always got, get a little misty-eyed every time. It's one of the most powerful things I've ever seen every time. It's so beautiful. So thank you for being willing to share that with us. Um, so there's, that's something, what, what you could feel that from what Mandy was talking about right there, that power of that moment, um, reuniting and seeing the light in her daughter's eyes. Um, we want, as any family who feels drawn to Anasazi the way that Mandy's family did, we want them to be able to have that opportunity. Um, and that's what the scholarship fund is all about. And we don't ever want to be able to have to say no to a family or a family not be able to have this experience because they just can't quite afford it. And that's what this is all about. And so I would like to make an asking, you guys are familiar with that, um, to consider donating to Anasazi um, and making it part of your annual donation this time of year. And th there is, over half of the young walkers at Anasazi come through the program as a result of these scholarship donations which are given by so many giving people. And the, the amount of lives that have been affected by people donating to allow their children and their families to be able to experience what Mandy has talked about um, cannot be measured. So uh, we would invite you to consider that at this time. Oh. Nate, hey, hey, Nate, you're back. How's it going? Can Nate, I share your yeah, you're looking a little tired. Oh, Careful, the fire's hot. <laughs> Should have been real bad. Yeah. yeah. Fire safety. <laughs> fire safety. <laughs> uh, we're kind of at the end of our annual scholarship gala, except for the one thing where we say thank you to everybody. And I want to uh, give my sincerest thanks on behalf of all of the Anasazi family. Thanks to our wonderful trail walkers. Callie, wherever you are, thanks to Ford for, for <laughs> helping us out in, in this experience. Thanks to Steven Nelson and Matt Shaw. That music was fantastic. And Mandy, thank you so much. If you're not following um, Vintage Revivals on your Instagram, your life's going to be better if you do that. Go so get it. You should go and do that. Also, we want to thank our uh, generous sponsors, Forever Young and Sky is the Limit. These are uh, a list of people who go 
out of their way in times that they don't have to, to bless the lives of other people. It's, it's very touching for me. The Ashdown Family Zero Res Phoenix. The Sorensen Legacy Fund. The Jenkins Family. The Reese Family. There and Back Outdoor. Southwest Desert Dusters. So many, many more. And all of you who are about to be donor, donors to Anasazi, thank you for your generosity. The ripples of your actions, these donations, change lives of these families. And this uh, medicine is something that we need so desperately right now. So thank you for helping that to happen. Yes, and thank all of you who are watching tonight and are a part of the greater Anasazi family, the, the whole tribe. Thanks to all of you, and we wish all of you guys a wonderful time this holiday season. And remember, it's more important to bust a coal than to receive a coal this holiday season. <laughs> so, oh yes, we can't forget about the party. The There's a big party on the internet. <laughs> There's going to be a virtual after party on Zoom. So if you want to join, talk with us, who knows what's going to happen. I heard that Ford is going to teach everyone how to make the perfect wet dog. Yes, I'm going to do my best to teach mm -hmm. the perfect wet dog, yep. but I, I, I don't have any milk. Oh. So we're going to try it with cheese. <laughs> Going somewhere no one's ever been before. <laughs> but the link for the after party can be found on the, Insta the Anasazi Instagram page or the Anasazi Facebook page, or it's in the, it should be in the comments here of this live video. Um, so please join the party. Thank you guys so much, and uh, have a great evening, and good night. Sure, sure. love ya. Whether we walk among our people or alone among the hills, happiness in life's walking depends on how we feel about others in our hearts. You may not believe in such things, but know this, my young friend. In the wilderness, I was reclaimed from darkness. The success of my journey depended on whether my heart walked forward toward my people instead of backward away from them. To be alive is to be with others. To be at peace with others is to be we. I have learned that the point of life's walk is not where or how far I move my feet, but how I am moved in my heart. Whether we walk among our people or alone among the hills, happiness in life's walking depends on how we feel about others in our hearts.